My name is Josh Miller. I own Riverstone Kennels, and I've been training gun dogs for more than 16 years. I have field trialed, I've hunt tested, but at the end of the day, I'm a duck hunter. You might find that the duck in our Duck Dogs podcast is spelt uniquely. The UK stands for my British labs. I love my British labs. I love what they offer me, both as a part of my family and the high motor in the field. As you're going to find, I have some pretty special dogs. Follow along in our podcast series here as we talk about both in the field hunting and in the field training situations that will hopefully help you progress with your dog at home. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Duck Dogs. I am your host, Josh Miller. And uh, before we get going here, I want to spend just a minute and thank our great sponsors. So thank you to Yukonuba, Yukonuba Premium Performance Sport 3020 and 2616, both great foods, great formulas. And if you're looking for a premium food to put your four-legged hunting partner on, I would highly suggest you checking out Yukonuba, www.yukonuba.com. Also, thank you to Sitka Gear. Sitka Gear is your, especially as you're going into season, your go-to premium clothing brand that uh, you need to make sure you go check out because you are going to be more comfortable for longer. It doesn't matter if you're looking to stay you know, cool, stay warm, stay dry. Sitka is going to make sure you can stay in the field and be more comfortable longer, which means more enjoyable hunts. We all need more time in the field, make sure that your time in the field is as comfortable as it can be. So www.sitkagear.com. Also, thank you to Lucky Duck. Lucky Duck is your five-star crash test rated kennel, both in the intermediate and the large sizes. So if you're looking to be sure that your four-legged hunting partner is traveling as safely as they possibly can, you want to make sure to go check out Lucky Duck. They just came out with a new kennel cot, which just means that now they're more comfortable while they're safe. So uh, www.luckyduck.com. Also, thank you to Gundog Supply. Gundog Supply is your one-stop shop for all of your hunting and training needs as it pertains to your hunting partner, your four-legged hunting partner. So go check them out. They're great people, great customer service, and a great, great company. So www.gundogsupply.com. Thank you to our newest partner, Kent cartridge uh kent is uh just a fantastic you know load uh doesn't matter what you are looking for as far as your size if you're looking for bismuth if you're looking for your know, fast steel that fast steel 2.0 is a fantastic load that bismuth is a super fantastic load uh i've been shooting kent for years and uh just appreciate the quality and here's the the other part of it Great people inside the company, which is a huge, huge deal to me. So uh, Kent Cartridge, go check them out. Spend stock up. Stock up so you don't find yourself in this ammo shortage like last year where you couldn't find ammo anywhere. Go stock up now so you're, you're, uh, you're sure to be ready for the season. And, of course, thank you to Retriever Roadmap. www.retriever roadmap is your place to go for online step-by-step videos to be sure that you can get the most out of training your own dog at home. www.retrieverroadmap.com. Well, hope everybody had a great week, a great weekend. And uh, we're doing something different that we've never done before. We have three microphones going today. So uh, I am joined by my beautiful bride, Whitney. Hello. <laughs> and I am joined by Br- Mr. Brett Ayers, who's been on this show multiple times. I was really hoping you would <laughs> screw that up. <laughs> and, and call you my beautiful bride. <laughs> yeah. Thanks uh, for having me. That is not going to happen. Um, uh, yeah, it's so this is this is neat. So we're going to try we're going to try our best. I didn't prep these guys before we started this thing okay so we're gonna prep right now okay so mm-hmm. so we're not gonna yell over each other and we're not all gonna talk at once because when i listen to shows i can't stand when when three people or four people <laughs> or five people are all trying to yell over each other and talk and i'm sitting in the truck going will four of you shut up and just one of you talk you know so we're gonna try to do our best to not get excited we're new at this you know this multi you know setup here so uh 
we'll try we'll do our best but thank you guys both for being here yeah thanks thank for you me. yeah so um a few things i want to want to cover this week and i'm really interested to get some new kind of fresh perspectives here so whitney has uh some puppies on the ground i want her to cover some of that stuff um brett has been up here doing uh video work for retriever roadmap um I kind of want to get some perspective from Brett, not necessarily retrieve a roadmap stuff because I don't want this to be a big infomercial. What I want is for Brett to um, give his take on what he has seen. Again, I didn't prep him for this, so I'm sure he's (laughs) sitting over here going, what are you going to ask me? Um, What he has seen over the last couple of weeks of being here uh, from training because he's in a really interesting point in training um, where we're coming to the end of the summer training like I leave uh, next week as crazy as that is uh, next week for Kansas right what yep that's Kansas. correct Kansas for doves uh, and then I go Texas teal and it just now season's off and rolling so uh, there'll be a few changes in the podcast we'll get another one in next week uh, well I shouldn't say that because I've I've failed on that promise a number of times uh, we should have another one done next week before Whitney and I leave for Kansas uh, and then we're gonna have to get creative on how I'm gonna do these podcasts on the road it is not as easy as you would think to find somewhere that is quiet that we can do this where there's not all this background noise and nonsense going on. And then you guys know how it is when you're on hunts, you're up early, you're up late. There's usually like, especially because I'm going to be with clients and entertaining people. There's a lot of stuff going on. So we're going to have to get creative, but we'll make it happen. So, um, so, uh, first off, let's recap game fair because this was Brett's first game fair. This was, I don't even know how many times Whitney has been to Game Fair. Mm-hmm. Um, Whitney gets easy Game Fair. I'm not even gonna <laughs> gonna count <laughs> count uh, her as going to Game Fair because Whitney comes and goes as she pleases. She uh, and I'm sure that there's a rebuttal to this coming. But you are throwing her right under oh, the bus. Right? Uh, well, but but okay. So here's the thing though: is that Whitney kind of like jumps for joy about shows. <laughs> right like i can't wait to go and i can't wait to see people i can't wait to talk to people i can't wait and she kind of gets um gets after me as she should when uh i'm just like ugh, like one more day you know, one more day and and you know game first behind us and um the biggest reason is is that so if you guys have been following along with or brad is on a mission we're gonna talk about his mission here in, in a little bit um but uh, we were so tired one day that we got up, we you know, came into the living room, we were talking, and all of a sudden we're both asleep sitting on the couch. Like <laughs> it's just like it just it wears on you, and and it's not like you get done with the show and you get you know you get to, you know, Monday Tuesday you know Tuesday Wednesday off right right like you jump right back into the week and you have your full week and so and I know some of you guys are like oh boohoo you know poor, poor you <laughs> I'm not trying to say that but what I'm saying is when you have you know for me the busiest month of the year we've been working all year to get dogs to this point to bring clients in to train them to get these dogs home to get ready for a season and I have had Delta Waterfall uh, Expo down in Little Rock. I have had Game Fair. I have had Game Fair. And then this weekend I go to Oshkosh, Wisconsin for Wisconsin Ducks. Like, I need... And then, right into season. Mm-hmm. And I've been battling Lyme's disease. And my dogs haven't been getting worked because I've just been feeling like junk. And, like, you start adding all this stuff up, and it's like, August has been a whirlwind. Mm-hmm. So, um, anyway, so first, first off, did you want to cut me off and tell me how wrong I am. Yeah, absolutely. You are so wrong. <laughs> um, well, I get to play the mom card and the breeder card because I get to stay home with the kids, hang out with them. Plus I had a new litter of puppies on the ground. So, I mean, it's not like I'm just hanging out at home here. Like I am totally working just like you are just in a different environment and in a different way. I mean, we could totally have switched spots if you would have loved to whelp out our Lola and Clyde litter, plus watch our kids all at the same time, and I could have went to Game Fair. I mean, I would have been happy to do that if you really wanted to. Uh, just, but I, I, I was <laughs> sitting back here. I'm thinking I need to scoot my chair over a little bit. 
I was needed that game for I didn't have the option. For sure. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, but that is why I am very lucky that I can come and go as I please. I'll, I'll throw my two cents in here. She did say on multiple occasions that she wished she was going, mm-hmm. you know, to the show because there are people that come into the booth that are asking, you know, that want to talk with Wendy and people she hasn't seen for a while. So I'm going to cool the fire here a little bit. and <laughs> I think I might be leaning her way just no, a little bit. Nobody asked for your opinion. <laughs> Uh, so since since you're giving your opinion on things, what do you think of Game Fair? This was your first Game Fair. Yeah, I loved it. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, been going to shows for a long time, so you know, seeing people, meeting people, uh, seeing friends that I haven't seen in a long, long time. Um, lots of fun. Um, lots of dogs. I didn't realize how big you know the whole dog thing was with all the games and events that they had for dogs and people having all kinds of breeds of dogs, just not Labradors or Chessies, Retrievers, whatever. You know, there was Pit Bulls and there were German Shepherds and there were Huskies and there were, you name it, um, St. Bernard. I saw a St. Bernard uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. So all kinds of different dogs. So that was, that was interesting. Um, And yeah, uh, thankfully we had, you know, a little weather issue the first weekend and, the Friday of the second weekend, but after that, like it was beautiful. It got a little warm yesterday, but you know, I hear all, everybody talking about, yeah, you're lucky it's not 90 or 100 degrees. And mm-hmm. I could only imagine because when it was in the lower 80s in that tent, you know, this the humidity, it it got you. But um, yeah, a lot of fun, lots of lots of fun stuff, lots of good conversations. Appreciate everybody that stopped in the Riverstone Kennels Retriever Roadmap booth and. You know, learned a little bit about Retriever Roadmap or, you know, wanted to talk training and just dogs in general. So mm-hmm. it's a fun time. So uh, so first off, spot on because uh, it's, it's the the great and the terrible part of an outdoor show, right? Mm-hmm. So you get to be outside. It's awesome, right? Yep. As long as it's nice out. Mm-hmm. When it's pouring rain, not so fun. Not so fun. <laughs> when it's 110 degrees. Not so fun, but we uh, we did have rain two of the six days. Yep, right. But the other four were really nice. They were beautiful. They really were. It was it was like pants got you in the mood for hunting season. That's right around the corner. Just you know, just the anticipation and just it was it was a good time. Mm-hmm. Well, and if you're not from the you know Wisconsin Minnesota area, uh, Game Fair is essentially the think of a state fair. For outdoorsmen and women that you can bring your dog to, that they have dog games you can go compete in, that basically any brand that you're wanting from camouflage to decoys to you name it is all there. Um, it's really a neat thing. And what was interesting is um, Brett, uh, who we, we've nicknamed Jerry because uh who who came up with that nickname me okay so you named yourself jerry jerry was short for geriatric um because he tends to date himself uh, from time to time so uh brett had talked about that you know years ago must have been many years ago because i don't remember this um years ago that there just wasn't the opportunity to go see feel experience products yep. And shows were the place to do that. And that's really interesting because you kind of look back on like, I look at Game Fair and I'm like, this is a two, three day weekend event, back to back weekends. It doesn't travel. It's in the same place every time. The same vendors are there every time. The same people are there dang near every year. Like, why? Like, why do people come to this? Mm -hmm. Like, it's the same thing all the time, right? And sure enough, every year, Everyone's there, yep. and all these people are there, and they show up. And so, um, you know, that was kind of interesting, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, like like you said, years ago that w- we didn't have the Cabelluses or the Bass Pros. There were certain stores, but they weren't. You know, they didn't have all these remote stores like they do now. Um, so, if you wanted to see something, a new decoy or a, a new gimmick or whatever, you had to go to shows like this to to get to see them in person. Um, How far of a uh, horse and buggy ride was it to get to the show? <laughs> well, I walked. <laughs> Uphill both ways. Both ways. <laughs> that was a long time ago. So, um, 
but yeah, it, it's, it's nice to, it was nice to see the crowd, um, because, you know, shows over the years, especially with COVID, um, you know, I just don't think the crowds have been there. So I was really impressed with the crowd. Um, you know, the rain kept some people away both Fridays. Uh, we got really lucky this, the, you know, the second weekend Friday because they were forecasting rain the whole entire time or the whole day. And, you know, it actually was nice. And then all of a sudden crack of thunder and this little cell just happened to sit right on top of game fair the whole entire the rest of the afternoon and we got wet, but I just finished my seminar <laughs> and I said, does anybody have any questions? And it started raining. I said, we're not going to take any questions, <laughs> <laughs> but we did take some questions and the majority of the crowd, I mean, you know, there was over a hundred people there for sure stayed. Right. I couldn't believe it. You were soaked when you came. Oh back my <laughs> gosh. And I'm sitting there. I, I'm, I was more worried about like, is this microphone that's attached <laughs> to my neck going to you know, start shorting out? <laughs> gonna um, zap you. Yeah. But no, it, it was, it was good. It was, um, lots of fun and I'm looking forward to next year. What's mm -hmm. your favorite part? Uh, just, just talking to people, you know, we're all there for the same reason. We all love the outdoors. You know, the people that obviously came into our booth, our, we're, our dog people. So just talking about, you know, the same passions were, was my favorite part. And mm -hmm. it's really funny because, you know, I hear guys that, you know, that go to these shows that work vendor booths and stuff like that. And, you know, they're just, they just dread it. And, and I, I personally like it. Uh, I've done a lot of shows over the years for Sitka, for Lucky Duck, um, for different call companies and calls, lunch Bob calls, different, different call companies. And, I just always enjoyed, you know, doing shows. Like when I do shows for Sitka, uh, a lot of them were indoors because they're in the in the winter time. And you know, some of the guys I'd work with, like, ah, oh, but you know, I just love hearing people's stories. You know, where they came from, what they're doing, how they're doing it. I I just love that aspect of of shows. Mm -hmm. Whitney, what yeah. was uh, what was your favorite part? Oh my gosh, why well, I, I always love talking to everyone, and um, especially you know I'm. I'm such a big believer in what we do here and how we're, you know, keeping those relationships and being able to see all of our Yukonuba people out there. You know, they just launched that Yukonuba Puppy Pro and just to see. Which you had, were a big part of. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did a lot of testing for them. And um, just to see the um, all their different booths. I mean, they had multiple mm -hmm. booths there. And it's like you and almost a great presence, Very a great presence. presence. And it's almost like um, I actually had just sent him an email this morning, and I was like, it was so fun to see the Yukonuba family. Like that's exactly what it is. Is it's like you just get to see all these people. And then I took the kids there to Game Fair yesterday, and they were so sweet to the kids. I mean, you know, Colt and Ava had never been to Game Fair, and literally the second we went to the Yukonuba booth, they had come over with these bags full of like puppy toys and treats and these Yukonuba sunglasses. And um, it was just so fun to see everyone and just people that, you know, you usually don't ever get to see that they come from all over and are there at Yukonuba and mm -hmm. hanging out, taking photos in the big food bag <laughs> and <laughs> by the, the big, big dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, so I'm going to piggyback off what you just said a little bit mm -hmm. because there's a really interesting observation, you know, that I specifically had here. Um, this show, but it's been a building observation. Brett and I have talked about this a little bit. Is so everything you just talked about, mm -hmm. right? So we talked about you know Yukonuba and the experience you had bringing the kids and mm -hmm. how great they've been to work with and all that stuff. Okay, so um, when you look at brands across the board, you spe specifically go to a show like that. Mm -hmm. You go, and uh, you know they'll talk about why their stuff is better. Than another. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to exclude food from this because mm -hmm. I really believe that like Yuganuba is a fantastic product and we have seen significant benefits of this. Okay. But you look at, you take this, so take that off the table. Okay. Cause I think we can all agree there's good food and there's bad food people wise. There's good food and there's bad food dog wise, mm -hmm. horse wise, whatever. Right. <laughs> uh, products. You're making a product for use. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously there's a lot out there, right? Of different products. Okay. Most of the products are good products. 
there's not many people coming out with junk anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. There's not bad stuff out there, generally speaking. Right. Yeah. So what separates a brand? It's culture. Mm -hmm. Who is the brand? Who is the brand? Who's behind the brand? You know, what's the story that the brand has? Right. That's a huge deal. Mm-hmm. You can do, but like, the, again, I'm taking them off the table on this just because I do believe that there are low quality foods. If you put your dog on, you are not going to have the performance that you have on Yukonuba, the teeth, the health. I just, I'm not going to get into a sales pitch here, but it, there's benefits. Mm-hmm. Most products, like when you go to a booth and you're like, Hey, you know, tell me about your stuff. Okay. Tell me about your, your competitors. Okay. Most people that are going to be professional are not going to tell you about their competitors. Um, but the honest truth would be competitors have great products. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, if they're to be honest, like they're great products. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's the culture of that company. Yep. It's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, who do you gravitate to and why? So this, mm-hmm. this, and this is not, this is no BS. Okay. You can Uba, Sitka, Sitka gear, Lucky Duck, Gundog Supply, Kent. I'm going to exclude Retriever Roadmap just because we're Retriever Roadmap and I I don't want to be sales pitchy. Those companies, okay, they all have competitors that all do a great job. Yep. I truly believe that those companies have some of the best people working for them in the industry. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I genuinely love people in those companies. That's what separates them. We have had, like, across the board, Without exception, across the board, all of those companies, we have had competitors of theirs come to us and say, how do we work with you? And we don't do it. Not because the product isn't good. It's because we don't click with you. Your values aren't what ours are. Right? It's people. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And at shows like that, what's neat about that is that you can connect with the people. You can see the people behind the brand. 100%. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I never... I didn't, I didn't deep dive think into that until Brett, you had mentioned about how you did, you couldn't experience the product without these shows right. a while back. Okay. Yeah. Now I would say you can't really experience the, the brand without shows like this because some companies are great at social media. They're not good people. Right. They're not mm-hmm. good companies. Right. But they're great at social media. Yep. Okay. I can say the same about that there are some really poor companies on social media. Right. They're great people. They're mm-hmm. great products. Mm-hmm. They just aren't, that's not their talent. Yep. Right. But you go to a show like that and you look someone in the eye and you go through things, it's different. Yep. Yeah. The mm-hmm. one thing I want to kick in there that, that I've noticed and going off of that is, you know, years ago going to a show, it was just a tent or a table and you walked up and there was the product. That was it. Now you go to these shows and then you go into some of these people's booths, and then it's, it's an experience. It's elaborate. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's like they you're welcomed in. It's homey. You know, it just feels it feels good, and that experience is what it's like. Man, this is what I really like. This is what this is this is me. And then you know you become attached and get to talk to the people in there and feel, hey, these guys are great, and you know they make you feel you know special, which you know it, it's sincere, mm-hmm. and but. That's that's the thing. It's all about experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And here's what's interesting about that too. Okay, so just in talking with people, right? Like the, how it, it seems to be like that small talk, right? Like if you're like, "Hey, how's it going today?" Right? right? At the show, it's "How's the show going?" Right? Mm-hmm. Right? And a lot of people tell you how the show's going. So it's interesting when I started really thinking about the experience part of it, of like how like how are you experiencing the show? Right? It wasn't it it wasn't always so like the booth was like the experience of the booth was something, Mm -hmm. but it always came back to the people because Mm -hmm. there were booths there that were super elaborate, like crazy, big money. And I heard people talk about like, yeah, they think they're pretty special. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, they, yeah, pretty arrogant, pretty, you know, and then you'd go to a booth then they would they would talk about this right they talk about man they were the nicest people and mm-hmm. they spent time with me and they walked through everything with me and they they cared about what i had like it's people right mm-hmm. it's people well 100 right? percent. it's it's really neat i i, I enjoy that part of it yep. mm-hmm. for sure so. yep no i think that's that's <clears throat> that's what makes a brand like you said mm-hmm. and you know being involved with with brands you know through the years and i mean that's that's it 
Mm-hmm. I've always tried to make myself at a show is like, hey, you can come up to me. You know, I, I want to hear what you have to say, you know, and, but that's that's who I am. You know, mm-hmm. I want to hear your experiences. I want to, and you know, possibly learn from you. And, mm-hmm. you know, just we're all there for the same reason. Mm-hmm. I'm not against you. You're not against me. You know, I'm not trying to outdo you. You're not trying to outdo me. We're all here for the same reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I also, I don't know if it's just because I had my kids there, but um, I thought I noticed a lot more younger kids mm. there this year. Hmm. Like, especially ones that came into our booth. Mm-hmm. I mean, there were like, I don't know, how old do you think they were? 13 to 15 right. year olds, yep. you know, like walking around and enjoying the show. That's what I really noticed this year, yep. were that there were a lot of younger kids, yep. which was great to see. Yeah. I just quick little 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 pip of what i saw there we had and you're talking about age we had uh, Mm -hmm. a young girl come in to the booth and she's like you know her dad's like we got we have retriever roadmap but she's doing all the work and she's (laughs) like 15 years old you know or 14 Mm -hmm. years old somewhere in there and she's like yeah you know i've been doing this and we've been doing that and we've been working on this and you know so to me that was like this is awesome because you know here's a girl you know at a young age and she's She's all about dog training and she knew she knew the dogs that were she's mm-hmm. like oh yeah that dog <laughs> solo i know solo solos in this part of the program and you know this that and the other so. yeah she did say that, that was great. <laughs> yeah. so it just that was a you know just hearing that type mm-hmm. of stuff you know that that makes you appreciate you know all the hard work and stuff that you put into something whether it be a product or what whatever it is that you know and it just makes it all worthwhile mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. And, and that same girl Joe Perez, who owns RPM, right? Like he just he literally slid me a note that said that said give her a lead, right? So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, what's your favorite color? So she <laughs> said pink and gets gets a lead. So but like people, like Joe's a fantastic, mm-hmm. genuine, kind person, right? I want him to be super successful, mm-hmm. right? Just because I like seeing good people be successful. Okay, so so here's what something that's interesting about you talking about the kids because mm-hmm. you mentioned kids, mm-hmm. something you noticed, right? I noticed a lot of kids. You know the number of people, it wasn't crazy amount, right? But the number of vendors that when I was talking with them as the, the show was kind of winding down, they said, man, like, there's just no kids here. There's no young people. <laughs> like, there's, you know, the sport's dying kind of a thing, okay? So here's what's interesting to me. So it, there's there's probably going to be a psychologist that comes at me and corrects me on this, but, but it, there's, a, <laughs> there's a psychological fact of... When you care about something, it jumps out at you, mm-hmm. okay? No different than when you when you get a car, okay? You buy a, a white Tesla. Never, you know, no one has this. That's why I want this color, right? Nobody has this. All of a sudden, you're at a stoplight the next day, and you're like, well, there's a white Tesla. Mm-hmm. You start driving, <laughs> like, there's another, another one. one. There's no, you're noticing it because it's important to you. Mm-hmm. Before, it wasn't important to you, so you didn't notice it, mm-hmm. right? Now... It's meaningful, okay? I think the reason we notice the kids is because we have actively been talking about how do we get kids involved? How can we pull, how can we get kids involved into a retriever roadmap, right? Mm-hmm. Through the parent guidance, how can we get them involved? How can we get, make them successful, right? Mm-hmm. How do we get kids you know, into the hunting side? How do we tell the story that they want to come, even if mom and dad don't? Like, is there something we can do? Like, we've been actively talking about this. We care about it. That's why we saw it. Right. Mm-hmm. Why did some of the vendors not see it? Because those kids aren't open in their pocketbook, so they don't care. Right. Mm-hmm. right? Yep. That's so true. So it's, it's, it's really interesting. Right. Yeah, really interesting. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> One other thing I want to say before we get off the topic of Game Fair was we had a individual come in the booth, a younger guy, and which we had a lot of people come in, but they're like, hey, he's this particular guy was like, hey, man, like, I've, I've been wanting to meet you. I listened to your podcast. He goes, I just want you to know, I'll probably get worked up over this, but <clears throat> I just wanted you to know that you not have only changed, you know, the way I train a dog, but you've changed my life. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, um, yeah, sorry. That, that means something, you know, Josh is, is you as a person. And I say this because you're, you're, you're my friend, but you know, the way you are impacting people, through what you do is just it's actually it's incredible mm-hmm. so i just i wanted to to include that so i gotta wipe the tears away <laughs> <laughs> it was it it was uh it's it, it's it's very um it's eye-opening mm-hmm. you know because um i mean i i 
I, I don't look at myself like this. Like just like the number of people that come up after a seminar and like, oh my gosh, like yeah, I, I love like I just do this because I'm passionate about it. And I do this because I, I love talking about what I'm passionate about. But a lot of times people think I'm passionate about the dogs. I am passionate about the dogs, but I'm more passionate about self bettering. Mm. You know, how do you make yourself a better person? How do you make the people around you better people? How do you make like, cause ultimately if we all did that, this world would be a heck of a lot better place. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, but it takes self reflection. It takes actual self acknowledgement of, Hey, I am weak here. How do I get better? Mm -hmm. Right. And I think the reason I'm so passionate about it is that for a long time in my life, I was surrounded by the exact opposite. I was surrounded by negative people that had no aspiration of getting better, the thought that they knew it all, the thought that, that I, you know, this is what it is, end of story, I'm not having a conversation. Like, that's not how we grow, right? And so I, th I think there's so much there's so much to be said about that, and, and hopefully there's you know more people uh, like that that appreciate that part of, the, of this, this podcast, but I do try to incorporate that a lot. You know, how, how do we grow and how do we get better? My challenge to you for the week is, like that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just... It's it's what I love, right? It really is. Yeah, I hope that you know, and I know who you are. But like when you sit here down here talking yourself into this microphone, you know, talking about different things, that just what it really means to people, mm -hmm. and the message that you, that you deliver. Yeah, I appreciate that, and I really appreciate that that kid that came in oh. and said that because that was a um, he had no idea what that meant to me. You know, like he, sure. he, he was like, he could have just walked by, he could have just said hi, you know, but, but, uh, to be open with me about that, it was, it was a big deal and it motivates me because the reality is, is that, you know, I don't get paid to do this. Right. Like I have to take time out of my day to come down here, to sit down here and to talk. That's why. Mm -hmm. Like when you think about like, I'm a big why guy, right. like if we're going to do anything, we got to, we got to identify the why, like, why do you do this? It's really easy to find the why not mm -hmm. to come down here sit down here, talk in the microphone by myself, right? Like, that's the why. Yep. I mean, that was a big why for me. That will be in the forefront of my thought when I'm sitting down here for a long time. Oh, for mm -hmm. sure, yeah. And there was a ton of people that come in the booth. It's just like, hey, I listen to Duck Dogs. It's mm -hmm. awesome. We had, you know, one family that came in and said their daughter goes to school in California. And I know they, they don't know who they are because they listen to this all the time, but they literally listen to you from California all the way back up to Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she, she, uh, she jokingly said, I'm so sick of hearing your voice. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, it, it is cool stuff. And, and really the reason that this, and you know, kind of a, to backtrack, the reason this podcast is even a thing is because of game fair, because of pheasant fest, because of the shows that I would go speak at that I couldn't speak at anymore with COVID. Like, I just have a passion of talking to people and reaching people and how do I connect with people, right? Mm. Um, a lot of those people, like, they never spend a dime with us. And I'm fine with that, right. you know? Yep. How, how can we help you? Yep, get him. <laughs> We're on the fly. We're on the fly. Get it. Gosh. There's one, one, one fly. One fly. Just fly. Irritate the heck out of me. <laughs> um, all right, so I have to jet here in probably 20 minutes or so. Um, I know this is going to go longer than that. And uh, so I wish I could say longer, but this is a difficult time of year for me because we are in the middle of training, like not even in the middle. We are at the end of training, which is always more stressful. It's always more stressful at the end because owners come back, owners get involved. You're training people now, not dogs. You're training people in a short schedule not the summer you had with the dogs, right? There's a lot going on, a lot of moving parts. I am incredibly thankful for the great clients that we have because it's fun working with them. It does make this time that much more enjoyable, but um, it's that time of year. And next week on Wednesday, I think it is, Whitney and I go to Kansas. Mm -hmm. So that means I have a week and a day, two days, to have all these dogs wrapped up, gone home, owners trained, back, you know, it's a lot. So right. because of that, I just have personally limited time. Um, you know, if, if we have stuff going, Whitney and, uh, and Breck can kind of stay on and keep things rolling. But um, let's talk about training and let's talk about the season of training, you know, because um, it, it, it's a big deal. You know, this time of year is, is a big deal for us as we prep and you know, we try to, you know, get everyone ready to go. So um, Brett, 
you have now been here for a week and a half, two weeks? Almost two weeks. Two mm-hmm. weeks. Um, what What's your perspective? Like, Because you, you've seen a lot in mm-hmm. the two weeks, training every day. What is your perspective of what has all, like, what, time out. I'd like to formally say happy 10 year anniversary to oh. my wife. <laughs> I, better not for, I, I better not forget that. That was our, we had our 10 oh year anniversary. Gosh. That was a complete squirrel moment, <laughs> but, um, happy anniversary. Happy honey. anniversary. Um, <laughs> so, so, um, Brett perspective, you are for lack of a better term as I'm watching this fly buzz around and I want to get him in the worst way. Um, you're a fly on the wall. You're back. You're watching things happen. Like, like, what are you observing for this time of year as it relates to training? Mm, you guys are swamped. So I, you hear the comment. I've heard the comment like, oh, you get to play with dogs all day. <laughs> I hear that quite a bit. Like, how, so, how can life be? How could you be so busy because you get to play with dogs all day? It's our favorite mm-hmm. comment. <laughs> <laughs> but just, just, you know, when I got up here, um, Whitney had – has two females in here that were one, one had her puppies while I was here. The other one, um, is going to have them probably this week. She's mm-hmm. due Saturday, I yep. think. So, um, so I got to experience one Whitney, you know, whelping those puppies, but two, um, you know, this is a check-in time for you guys. So I've been up here and I've watched this group of dogs, the advanced dogs for sure that Josh has been working. Um, they were, when I came up in early July, you know, they were at, um, they were working on five point. He had just mowed, um, you know, so he just mowed the five point down. So now, you know, it's a totally new game for them. Um, watching that progress. And then now, you know, watching these check-ins as the owners come in, you know, I've watched multiple owners, you know, come in not only from the advanced dogs, but also Dave working through some of the dogs, you know, some of the puppies and stuff and the obedience work that, they, that he's working on with, uh, you know, in the kennel. But watching the owners come in, watching the owners be able to interact with their dogs, in your instance, Josh, with the advanced, um, you know, actually running their dogs. So, you know, it, it's, it's pretty cool to see, you know, the the interaction of, of you and the owner and then watching that owner run his dog and seeing that smile on his face like, you know, <laughs> this is awesome. You know, and a lot of times, um, you know, like I ran your dogs a couple times is like, you know, these dogs are, these dogs are Corvettes, you know, Mm -hmm. and not saying that my dogs aren't good, but your dogs are at a whole level, you know, (laughs) they're on a big level and, you know, just be able to, to, to work them and again, watching the the owners come in and, and work their dogs and just seeing like the, wow moment you know on their face is, is pretty cool but yeah it's super busy um you know it's, it's non-stop for you guys so you know you get up early and you, you you go to the kennel and you you know you're working your dogs and then you know Whitney's got to take the kids to school and then she comes back and she's got you know her puppy stuff that she's doing and then you know then it's next thing you know it's five o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon and it's like holy cow where did they go mm-hmm. and so it's just, it's, it's non, it, it's a nonstop revolving, you know, I'm, I don't know if revolving is the right, right word, but just, you guys are always on the go. And that's, that's pretty much, you know, my perspective on, which I already knew that, but this is the first time I've seen, you know, I've seen Pippi, or I've seen pickups. So I've seen dogs get picked up. They go home, you know, you go through, or Dave goes through the whole, you know, the list of, Hey, this is what we've done. This is what we're working on. They get a, you know, demo with their dogs and, you know, I've seen all that, but you know, this is the first time I've really seen guys come in and handle their dogs, you know, at an advanced stage. And it's just cool to see, uh, you know, this, the, see the satisfaction of, of what the hard work that you've put in and the appreciation from the customer of, wow, this is awesome. Hmm. So I, I love that you brought that part of it up because you have seen both sides, mm-hmm. right? You've seen people that come in and I think are very open to learning mm-hmm. and they become successful. And you've also seen people that are frustrated or, you know, that they know it's them. Right. Right. So, so first let's, let's look at the dog side of it. Okay. So what differences, if any, did you see 
from when it was just me training to now the owner comes back in and is handling. Like, right. What differences in the dogs did you see? Um, I mean, the biggest thing, especially if the guy hasn't seen his dog for a while, the excitement of the dog seeing the owner, you know, so now he's all amped up because the owner's here, blah, 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 blah. And I think some of the observation that I saw was a, more of, hey, he's here. Um, I'm, I want to play a little bit more to where when you handled them, you know, it was time to work. They knew it was time to work. So when the when the owner came in to handle them, you know, it maybe took just a little longer to get them calmed down, get them, you know, get them, get them going. Uh, but once they started running, uh, yeah, there was some stuff, especially, and, and it's really, it's, it's interesting to watch, you know, people handle dogs that don't handle dogs on an everyday basis. You have guys that, you know, hand motions are like super fast and super jerky, and they're trying to, you know, basically run, run the line for the dog instead of just trusting the training that's, you know, that you've been putting, putting into them. So, um, but it, it, it's interesting, like I'll use Kyle and Augie for, for instance, you know, Kyle lives here locally. So he, he visits, you know, from time to time and he's learning as a, as a dog, a first time dog owner. And he's, he has a Corvette. Yeah, he does. He, I mean, <laughs> Augie is, he's a special dog. And um, watching, you know, Kyle's learning, learning how to handle the dog, learning how to read the dog. He's learning all this stuff. And, you know, you've done all the training. He He's done – he hasn't done a whole lot on his own. I'm sure he goes home and works with his dog, you know, when he goes home. But, you know, Augie was one of them dogs. As I watched several times when Kyle would come out through the, the months here, you know, knew Kyle was there and like was a total different dog when Kyle's presence was there, even to the point where Kyle had to hide when Augie was let out because if Augie seen him, he was like right at Kyle's side and Kyle's a single guy. So Augie's his, you know, his big buddy. And, you know, so he would go and then take a little bit to get him tuned back in. And now, you know, Augie's, you've got Augie, like, I mean, he's, he is fun to watch. And, you know, Kyle's still learning to, you know, to, to run him and it's just with Kyle Kyle sorry if you're listening to this I'm just saying I'm just I'm just, ta- I'm, just, I'm, just I'm just talking I'm just talking about the you know the little frustration uh on his side just because you know he sees what the dog's potential is watching you run him mm-hmm. and then when he gets up there he might not get the same reaction out of him mm-hmm. so watching you know a little frustration where, you know, he has to turn around sometimes and take a deep breath or, you know, no, you know, he, he maybe gets on him a little bit and he just, you know, he's, it's a learning process. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see people. And then you get guys that have run dogs and they come in and, you know, it's, it's natural and it's all good. The dog lines up and they're running drills and just crushing it. So it's, it's neat to see both worlds and it's both, it's neat to see some, you know, because I've, I personally, you know, I've been around you a long time or for X amount of years now, but watching this, um, you know, guys that, that send, buy a puppy, you have your puppy home, you send them away, the dog's gone for two months, comes back home, dog's home for whatever a long time, okay, now it, it leaves again. So, you know, there's a lot of time that that puppy, you're the second family, or maybe you're even mm-hmm. the first family because it spends more time with you and then you know, when the owner comes back and gets the dog, uh, it's just very, it's an interesting process to watch the dog get trained and you can see the dogs. And I know you told me a story the other day. You can see the dogs when they're here, they're tuned up, ready to go. When they go home, maybe things unravel Mm -hmm. because, you know, the owner just doesn't spend the time, doesn't, you know, just, just expects that, Hey, this is, you've, you've done all the work. I get to run them and it's all over with. We're, Mm -hmm you need to continue that consistency to keep that dog on a high level. And so it's interesting to, 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 to experience all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we, we've had, I mean, we've had pretty extreme examples of that. Right. Um, I told you, you know, the story this weekend of, you know, he's a a client, he's a very good friend of mine. Um, Went through intermediate training, came back in for advanced training. And I'm like, and this dog was awesome. Mm Mm-hmm. I look at me, I'm like, what in the world happened? Like this dog isn't anywhere near where he was when he left. I mean, like this dog was an absolute rock star leaving intermediate training, went home. I had, I, 
I heard from people I didn't even know about reaching out to me on Instagram and uh, and on Facebook going, oh, my gosh, Gus is an unbelievable dog. He's a machine, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I know he's doing great. And then to get him back in and have him be that poor, I mean, I, I ended up you know, getting a hold of the owner. And uh, I, I called him, and the first thing he said when he picked up the phone was, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what are you sorry about? He's like, how bad is it? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it's bad, man. Like, what in the world? You know? And he's like, ah, you know, and yet you just told me all the stuff that went on, all the stuff. I'm just like, oh my gosh. So we ended up having to put that dog through intermediate training again. Okay. And so he was actually in our booth at Game Fair probably a couple of years later. This is a while ago now, but a couple of years later. And it was, he's just, he's a very infectious person. Like, he's the guy you want to hang out with, you want to be around. He's just a great guy. And uh, so he was telling, you know, these people, like, oh, like, you got to take him here for training. Riverstone is the best. You know, Josh, you know, Dave do a great job, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and he was saying, you know, you, know, you do puppy. Like, you got to do puppy because then you have the foundation, right? And so he's, like, doing a sales pitch for us in the, in the tent. And he's like, and if, if your dog's good, you, then you go through intermediate training, okay? <laughs> if your dog is great, you go through intermediate training twice. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's just, he's that guy. He's just, he's so funny. But um, but it is amazing, right? It's like, and so here's the interesting thing. So like, okay, so we haven't talked about this, but what's the one common thing that you see? Like, is there something common as you see, like when you watch these owners come back and they interact with their dogs? And I, I'm I'm gonna cue kind of where I'm going with this. Okay, what's the one thing you think across the board everybody lacks? Oh, and I know Whitney knows this answer, but I think I do. Do you? Well, okay, Whitney. <laughs> I'm gonna say they lack confidence. Okay, confident. That's a good one. I just think it's experience. Mm-hmm. To me, it's just mm-hmm. you know they're just not experienced enough, and that's what I see in the confidence is a good one and they probably are intimidated Mm -hmm. because here you are professional trainer you've been working with this dog and you know you get here and all of a sudden it's like okay he he knows what he's doing now i'm nervous because i'm getting up there and then Mm -hmm. now all of a sudden the dog's feeding off of him being nervous and you know i mean I don't know if that's the answer you're looking for. But. No, you're, you're both right. So self-confidence <laughs> is, is what I say, but I think you're right. I think mm-hmm. experience is a part of confidence. Mm-hmm. But you could take very, very um, passionate people. Kyle's very passionate. Oh, about very hockey. passionate. You know, does everything with him, right? But I do think there's something to be said about that. So you and I went golfing the other day, okay? You are a golf coach. You're very good at golf, okay? When Whitney and I are golfing, I feel pretty good about my golf game. <laughs> when I'm with you, I'm like, okay, is this how I hold the club? Right. Like, mm-hmm. Or do I hold it like this? Yeah. Right. I start overthinking everything. It is very much the same way. Mm-hmm. There'll be times that I'll intentionally send a dog home before the own. Like if I'm reading the owner going like, you got this. You don't have it here, but you got yeah. this. Right. I'll send the dog home. Be like, hey, let me know how the, how the week goes. Right. Now that week I'm on pins and needles hoping it's not a train wreck, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Hoping I didn't read the situation wrong. But more times than not, it's man, he's crushing, he's doing so great. I'm so happy with him, all stuff, right? It's it's a self confidence thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But my fear is where are you gonna be self confidence wise when you go into the field? All your buddies are there, you mm-hmm. got this dog that's trained, uh-huh. you wanna show them off, right? Like, where's your self confidence there, mm-hmm. right? Because you're gonna start overthinking again. Mm-hmm. Right. And and it's just so interesting to me. So I I, you know, you guys have on the show here, you guys have heard me talk about, you know, this guy before, um, this guy, a guy named Ed Milet that I really like following because he does a great job. I think like talking about, um, just the, like the, you, like the bettering you, right. We talked about that earlier. How do you better you? Okay. And one thing he talked about just probably a week ago or so on his social media page was, you know, that he does some pretty, pretty high level coaching, right? So he's like, personal coaching, you know, coach mm-hmm. professional athletes. He's been with, you know, like big, you know, I think presidents, if not very high wow. up leaders, yeah. like, like he's done some really serious things. Right. And he's like, I said the same thing. And this is what hit me with this. Right. He's like, what's the one thing every single one of these people struggle with without question, self-confidence. Mm-hmm. Everyone does. 
Okay. So now all of a sudden I'm not feeling so bad, right? Like I'm like, gosh, when, when I, when I struggle with that, like, okay, maybe everybody struggles with it. Okay. Mm-hmm. If, if this is a fight, at least I'm going into this knowing it's a fight. Right. I, and it helps me with my self-confidence to know that everyone struggles with self-confidence. Mm-hmm. Right. It's really interesting. Mm-hmm. And um, so when I watch now, I, and I've been doing this for a number of years, how do I make it to where you're confident? Okay. One is I take your dog out of the equation. Mm-hmm. Eliminate the emotion. You don't get to run your dog. You get to run one of my dogs. My dogs get so dang screwed up because <laughs> they're teaching other people all the time. Right. Right. Are you blaming but, that on me? <laughs> no, no, not you in particular, <laughs> just in general. Um, but think about that. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm taking my dogs that are supposed to be the epitome, supposed to be super sharp, supposed to be, and on a weekly basis, allow them to get screwed up because I'm handing you know, them to a handler that has no idea what they're doing, trying to learn, trying to get better. Right. New person that is using different voice inflictions, different body language, different all this stuff. And I'm saying, guys, you got to teach him. Right. Right. Like it brings their self confidence up, the handler, because, okay, like if, if I'm, you know, if I'm shooting a rifle that's already sighted in, even if my aim is off, at least I'm hitting the board. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. But, you know, that's a huge deal. Like how, how do you, like the, the dogs are dialed in, helps the, the, the handler. Right. But for me, I'm like, I'm supposed to show these guys off this weekend. Right. Like these guys are supposed, you know, mm-hmm. it's a difficult thing. Right. Okay. But I believe if I can make them self-confident, if I can make the handler and the owner self-confident, they're going to go home and be successful. If they are not confident, they are not going to go and be home, go home and be successful. I don't care how good that dog is. Okay. Yep. Because they don't have it. You know, one of the best, one of my favorite sayings that revolves around self-confidence is, Think about a bird, okay? If you watch a bird outside, watch a bird fly around, bird lands on a branch, okay? Sits there, is comfortable, looking around, looking at all the scenery, okay? The bird doesn't trust the branch isn't going to break, but he trusts his own wings. Mm -hmm. Doesn't trust the branch, trusts his wings. Trust him, right? If, If everything fails, I know I can fix this. That's what I'm trying to do with these handlers. That's what we're trying to do through Retriever Roadmap, Mm -hmm. right, frankly. Mm -hmm. Give you the tools to go be successful, right? Because this is on you. Once these dogs leave the kennel, it's not on me anymore. It's on you, right? Right? How do we make you be successful? So it, it's so interesting to me to, to watch this roller coaster as it kind of goes through of like, there's definitely the, just like I had with you, right? Just like I'm golfing with you, so naturally I'm overthinking everything, right? I know that that goes on, okay? That's why I let it go. I'm who are I cheer. I'm not going to say, do this, do that. No, don't do you know, I'm not going to make you overthink it. Okay. It wasn't perfect. Man, that was awesome. Right. Okay. Oh, I got this. Okay. Now, after you do it that way four or five times and you got it. All right, man. Now let's just make this little tweak. Let's just do this. Right. And then we evolve. And, but you got to have a place to evolve from. Right. This is where as a handler, if you're like, man, I'm struggling with something. I can't get over this hump. I can't do this stuff. This is where I start. If you're at home going, gosh, my dog just won't stop looking at the dog. Mm-hmm. Look at you. Mm-hmm. Right. What do I, what can I work on? How can I be better? How can I be more confident? And then I'm going to go be a better leader. Then I'm going to go be a better coach. Right. Nobody wants to follow somebody that isn't confident themselves. Right. So that's where I turn. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. And I always love when I have, you know, for lack of a better term, I'm still watching this thing fly, fly, <laughs> fly in the wall of yeah. here's someone new that is, is watching this from a different lens. Mm-hmm. It's always interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, w- I want to share something because you weren't here when it happened, but on your guys' anniversary. On, on, our, on our actual anniversary. On your actual <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> yeah. I just hadn't have, had a chance to publicly <laughs> declare my love. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> Uh, Breast turning green. Anyhow, I'm trying to remember what the heck my thought process was there. But um, so you said, "Hey, work the boys," and I have hunted with Josh's dogs. I have worked Bud. I have worked Strike in the field. Um, I've never worked Brock. So when you said work the boys, I was, you know, I was excited about the whole situation, and but in the sense nervous. I'm like, okay, what if? You know, I was just going to do simple stuff with it, nothing complicated, right? But still, it's like, well, what if something happens? You know, what if one of the dogs, you know, 
freak, you know, gets hurt or whatever. So, you know, I worked solo first. He did great. Strike second. He did great. Third door opened up. And I didn't know for sure where all the doors were opened up. Mm -hmm. To the trailer. To the trailer. Right. Yeah. I opened that door up, door up, and Brock looks at me. <laughs> and his eye, to, him and I's eye, eye, eye contact was, you know, I, I, still a little nervous about this whole thing. As he goes, I could see it in his eyes. He goes, I got you. Mm -hmm. And I said his name. He jumps out. And from that first step away from that trailer, he was at heel. The whole I didn't have to say one word to him. Walked over to the water, and right away he's like, he's ready to go. And my confidence grew from that walk over there going, you know what? You know, we got this, you know, or I've got this. So this, he knew he had it, but, you know, <laughs> and uh, threw multiple marks for him, actually ran a little bit more on some water blinds with him, and the dog just crushed it. But, you know, going back to self-confidence, I was nervous at first because here, you know, the high-tier dogs, and I'm – nervous that something would happen or you know whatever and when i opened up that door and he looked at me and i just knew the connection was just like boom and i'm not saying it wasn't with the other all the dogs crushed it but just you know brock and for who he is and you know i'm i have two of his puppies you know so there's a connection there too and it was just like he's like i got you this is a piece of cake and mm -hmm. it was just it was a cool cool it was a fun experience one of the many things that makes that dog as special as he is is what you just talked about because a lot of dogs won't work for other people. Right. Easton, there, there's a photo of Easton literally sitting right, uh, right above Brett right now. Um, and that dog was very talented, was very special. Wouldn't work for anyone else. Mm -hmm. That dog could have had so many more hunting days if you worked for other people, because my buddies would still get to go when I was at school. I had, you know, ball. So I had fall ball. You know, during uh, during baseball season, so I couldn't go all the time. He could have gone with those guys all the time. He wouldn't work for anyone else, right? Brock is like that. He's like, I got you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I had a horse one time that I had broke from you know, a young colt. His real name was Scalp. We always call him Little Man because he was. <laughs> I a forgot that was his real name. Actually, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we, he was a little man when we got him, and he ended up being a great horse. I was the only one to ever ride him because he was my baby. He was my project. I was super proud of him, all stuff, right? So uh, we get out of field trying off horseback. I don't want these horses to be pasture ornaments. So we sold them. We sold them all together, mm -hmm. sentimentally humanizing. That's a big deal for me, right? That they're, oh my, my boys are all going together. And, uh, you know, probably a year into it, you know, the lady calls and she's like, hey, she's like, you know, just, you know, he, she called him scout. And I was mm. like, wait, who, you know, <laughs> um, you know, scout is not that we love red and Herschel, mm -hmm. but scout is not the right fit for us. You know, we're going to, you know, move him on to somewhere else. And it, it hit me there. Right. Like, yeah, because like, he was only my horse. Like mm -hmm. when he had you, did you I rode him one time? <laughs> and that was the one time, only one time <laughs> yes. that anyone else had ever been on that horse mm -hmm. ever. <laughs> no kidding. That, horse. No kidding. Like, <laughs> that was a disservice I did to him. You know, but like I was so passionate about this horse, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So dog wise, it is great to have other people run your dog. Right. Mm -hmm. It is great to have other people involved, right? Yep. If you are the only handler and then all of a sudden you switch it up, like we always talk about being the driver, right? So like you, know, you drive the car, right? Well, this is different, right? So like if we reverse it and reverse the perspective, now the dog is looking at it going like, like, I like what? Like, what are you saying? How are you saying it? I don't understand. I'm getting, you know, you're getting frustrated. I'm getting frustrated too. And I'm stressed out. Now where's dad? Like, that's who I want to work with. Like, mm -hmm. it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. good thing to have your, it's socialization. Yep. Mm -hmm. Work them with other people. Yep. Like, it's a really good thing to talk about because many of us have opportunities to do this. You know, you, how many times that game for you hear, like, not, not necessarily this way because there's plenty of vice, vice versa, but dog listens great to me. Won't listen to my wife mm -hmm. or vice versa. Yep. Plenty vice versa. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> but yep. listens to one, not the other. Mm -hmm. Well, if you spend five minutes talking to these people, you realize the one that the, that the dog listened to is the one that works with them. Right. The one that wants nothing to do with them or just expects that when I call you come, you know, you you shouldn't be all over the place in the house, right? You're just not my thing to to work with. Like, I love that you're on the couch with me. I love that you're part of the family, but not work wise. Like, 
that's the person that gets frustrated mm-hmm. because they don't know how to drive the car. Right. Right. Yep. So it's, it's a, it's a really, really interesting thing. Right. Um, I'm going to leave you guys with that. I'm going to let you guys <laughs> take it from here. You guys talk about puppies, talk about training, mm-hmm. talk about anything you guys want to, uh, to continue to talk about because these are two wells of knowledge here. But I have a trailer full of dogs waiting for me, and I have a lot of work that I have to get done here. And so I'm going to jet, but mm-hmm. um, you guys are in good hands. All right. So yep. hope you guys have a great, great week. These guys will keep chatting. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Have fun. (laughs) Hopefully nobody's going, okay, podcast is over. (laughs) It's not. (laughs) The star just left. (laughs) Oh, my. All right. Well. Let's uh, let's talk about puppies because, um, obviously, that's what you, that's your specialty, right? Absolutely. You're the the cream of the crop when it comes to puppies. So, I've seen a few puppies being whelped from my trips up here, but Mm -hmm. this trip, I came up on a Wednesday. Yep. And Lola's puppies, they were a week old on Friday, right? Saturday. Saturday. Because you guys were okay. gone at game fair. That's right. Because mm-hmm. I remember I remember <laughs> getting up, and every morning I get up, and they're in the little puppy. Uh, sunroom, sunroom at the lake. Sunroom at the <laughs> lake. I didn't know what you called it here. so. <laughs> but uh, And I would always look to see if she had puppies. And mm-hmm. I remember uh, leaving. Josh and I left. There was no puppies. Mm-hmm. And we get the game fair. And somebody at Game Fair comes in the booth says, oh, I see Lola had a puppy. And I'm like, she had, bu- <laughs> Lola had puppies. So I guess she did. So, and then she had started like 15 minutes or so after Josh and I yeah. walked out of the door. So mm-hmm. she first delivered her puppy. So yeah, what was that? Uh, mm-hmm. What's that like? What, I mean, for me, right. I, mm-hmm. I've whelped one litter of puppies myself. Mm-hmm. You will whelp, kind of walk us through. How that yeah. whole process is. It's um, it's a fun process. There's a lot of things that go into it. I think the hardest thing in the whole process is that you just don't know when that first puppy is going to come. And um, I always want to be there for that mama during that first, for that first puppy, yeah. obviously, because then I'll be there for the rest of them. But I, um, I might be a little over the top when it comes to me knowing when they're going to have puppies. So um, a female's temp actually drops a full degree um about 24 hours before they're gonna have their puppies and then they go into like this kind of like a shiver mode and then they stop eating they'll really start nesting and so there's all these you know things that I watch for before they're gonna have their puppies but once all those things are in place you still don't know exactly when that puppy's gonna arrive and so um I think that night I had set my alarm for every hour (laughs) on the hour (laughs) to wake up and check on Lola plus I slept on the couch next to the sunroom and Um, and you were a walking zombie that next <laughs> <one>. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was a, it was a night. That's um, got to be tough. It's super tough because then you still, I mean, you don't realize how much your brain is in active mode during the entire well being because you are constantly thinking, okay, how's mama doing? Does she need water? Is she going to eat kibble? Do we need to go outside? Did it go to the bathroom? How's the puppy doing? Has it started nursing? Like there are all these things that you're watching for constantly. So even though it's like, so if we do our puppy count x-rays, which we do a week before the mamas are due, so we know exactly how many puppies to expect. Um, so Lola had eight puppies. So you plan for eight hours of whelping from start to finish. And when I say finish, I mean like I've cleaned up the bedding. She's now in her easy whelp pen. All the puppies have their individual collars on. They've all been weighed. Mama's been bathed. Like I, when I mean finished, I mean like finished, I can walk out of the room. Mm-hmm. Um, so your brain is totally going for eight hours straight. You do not stop thinking right. of what's going on because then you're waiting for the next puppy. Um, and she had like two hours between puppy number one and number two. Oh, wow. And that's I was a little nervous mm-hmm. because I could feel the puppy. And I was just praying it wasn't stuck. Right. And she's contracting a little bit, but not. And so then now your brain is going, is this going to be a stillborn puppy? You know, what do you expect when this puppy comes out? And so then you go into this whole other mode of like, um, like, I don't know. It's, it's nuts. It's just like your brain is constantly going. But um, leading up to it is just super stressful because you want to be there for the, for the mama. So luckily I have nest cameras over the pens mm-hmm. so I can literally keep an eye on them if we're in the yard if we're in the kitchen wherever we are I can always have my phone on um but then the mamas they spit out their first puppy Lola was an amazing mom you never know what those first time moms are gonna be like because they don't know what's going on you know and 
I mean, they do, but they don't. Some mamas kind of look at their first puppy like, what just happened? Right. And Lola literally took to her puppy. So I break open the sack, but I keep the sack on the mom or on the puppy because I want that mama to get those motherly instincts by cleaning the sack off that first puppy. Um, And she did. And her puppy was like, whimpering you know normal whimpering and then she started crying and you oh. know that when the mama starts whimpering because her puppy's whimpering <sighs> you know those motherly instincts oh, are like kicked awesome. in instantly um and then you just kind of you i sit in the room with them the entire time right wait for every puppy to come out so josh and i had left and that first puppy was born mm-hmm. like 15 minutes after <laughs> we left and you were if i remember right by the time we got home at yeah. Before six o'clock or it was a little after mm-hmm. six something. Every, everything, you were pretty much. We were done. You were done. Wrapped yeah. up. You had seven yellows and one black. <laughs> seven yellows and one black. <laughs> All seven yellows were born. And then the last one was the, the black, black one. one. <laughs> I was like, no way is this going to be an all yellow litter. Oh I, that would have been nuts. Yep. That's but it wasn't. Crazy. That's yeah. crazy. So how many males, females? We have four yellow females, three yellow males, and one black male. Nice. So mm-hmm. how does, how does the placement process work from now? So mm-hmm. how have you decided, you know, the placement of who's getting, you know, what puppy? And what puppy? Okay. So when a litter is born, I wait until they're about five days old before I start placing them because I need to make sure they're all stable, gaining weight, you know, making sure everything is good. Um, and then I s- print out my reservation list. We have four reservation lists: yellow male, yellow female, black female, black male. Um, and the reason we take them from sex and color is because one, you never know if a litter is going to take or not. You never know how many are going to be in the litter. Mm -hmm. And Josh and I tend to sometimes change the breedings. You know, I mean, when they come through the, if offsprings come through for training and maybe we want a little more oomph under them, maybe we want a little less, then we're going to adjust our sires accordingly for that next breeding. So I would hate for someone to put down a deposit on a specific litter and then it's like, oh yeah, by the way, you're not getting that sire or, you know, like it's, it didn't take or there weren't enough, like the last thing I want to do is let someone down. So what I do is I print out those four reservation lists. I start at the top and there is about, oh gosh, anywhere from 120 to 150 people on each reservation list. So it's not that I offer the first three yellow female people Mm -hmm. a, a puppy offer because they're going to be, they might be looking for something different. Everyone knows that Clyde's puppies have a little bit more giddy up to them right out of the gate. Um, If someone wants a therapy dog, obviously I'm not going to be offering them a Clyde puppy. Right. So I go down my reservation list and I send an email um, to people saying you have a puppy offer, but it is the temperament that they are looking for. Mm. So, I mean, I could go through 50 people before I send out those three. Oh, wow. All three puppy offers. Wow. Because it's, it's all based on the date, obviously, that you placed your deposit. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm not going to offer you a puppy that's not the temperament you want. Right. That's my job is to make sure that you get a great 13, 15-year commitment. Right. So Lola and Benelli. Yep. They're on puppy contracts, right? They are. So at what stage of the pregnancy do the owners bring mm-hmm. the the soon-to-be mothers to, to you? So I like them... Um, no later than a week before well being um just so that way they can get acclimated with me they can get acclimated in the puppy nursery we can do the puppy count x-ray um and then i will i will i actually love keeping females during their entire pregnancy i think it's a really cool bonding mm-hmm. that i get i get to experience the whole pregnancy which they're all a little bit different sometimes they make gourmet meals for them to eat <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, no later than a week. Gotcha. So that gives them plenty of time because I still also, if they want to be at home, that's where they're most comfortable too. Sure. Right. So I like, um, I'm always open to them going back home. And sometimes the owners love that um, extra connection that they get with their dog being pregnant. But what's really cool is that now those owners, once those um, females come back to me, once that first puppy is born, they get to watch the entire whelping from our nest camera. No, that's... So that's something that's neat that. Not a lot of people get to witness. I get to do all the hard work, and then they just get to watch their dog become a mama. Yeah, I couldn't imagine that experience, just bringing that life in and then watching mm-hmm. watching the mother take to the puppy. And, you know, like you said with Lola, her mm-hmm. instantly, you know, those instincts kicked in. That's just, yeah. to me, that's a, that's a super cool experience, and you get, mm-hmm. to, you get to do it 
quite a bit. A lot. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's... And it's, it's actually, it never gets old. Right. Honestly, it never gets old. These seven weeks, like these seven weeks are basically cookie cutter weeks, mm-hmm. every single litter. Yeah. And it is still amazing to me. Yeah. Every time a puppy is born, how in the world do they know to nurse within the first minute? Yeah. That's incredible. That's awesome. How do the mamas know to stimulate the puppies to go to the bathroom? Yeah. Like such incredible instincts. Yeah. I feel uh, you got Benelli that's you know that's mm-hmm. due here. I, she she's got twelve puppies. <laughs> twelve. Twelve was yeah. the puppy count, and yeah. that poor girl. <laughs> <laughs> Her belly's basically dragging on the ground <laughs> yes. at this point. But she's a trooper. She's you know yeah. she's uh has she, is she a first time mom or she's a first time mom. So actually, oh. I don't know if you know this, but Lola and Benelli are sisters. Oh no, I didn't know that. They're sisters. Very similar temperament. Um, I. Th- you know, they went through training with us. Lola was a little bit more relaxed. And so that's why I bred her to Clyde to wow. offset Clyde's fire, you know, do a little bit more relaxed yeah. female with him, obviously. And then Benelli, they're so Bres or uh, Lola and uh, Benelli are from Breslin and Bud. Oh. And so I'm like, this is going to be so cool. Let's see what this mix of Clyde and Bud do. And let's see what a mix of strike and Bud do. Right. You know, so that's super cool. You know, Bud was in the house the other day and I was like, Bud, you're a grandpa. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> it's hilarious. so weird. Um, but that's, a, it, it's kind of the whole way of, well, why do you breed to who you breed to, you know? And it's just like, you try and think of these lineages. Plus you also have to look, number one, I always look at genetics first, yep. right? Like if you have a carrier of something, you're obviously not going to breed a carrier. Then you look at the pedigree. And then you look at the temperament, you know, looks, we don't care about looks. Mm -hmm. We don't breed for color. And so that's kind of all thrown out the window a little bit. Right. Um, But it really comes down to those genetics and pedigrees and just knowing their temperaments. You know, you have to look at the temperaments, obviously, because of who you're breeding and what you're going to be breeding for. But even though Lola and Benelli are sisters, I'm still expecting the Clyde litter to have a little bit more go and the strike litter to be a little bit more laid back. Right. Right. And you're currently a year and a half, two years out. On yeah. Puppies. Leaning more on the two year on side two years, right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was interesting at game fair. Um, you know, the people that came in, you're looking for puppies. You had, mm-hmm. you had the people that were wanting to take a puppy home that day. <laughs> yeah. So when they come in and you tell them two years, they're like, Whoa, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, well, I guess this isn't going to, you know, this isn't for me and you mm-hmm. know, they go on, but then you have the people that come in that, that know mm-hmm. that you have a waiting list and like, this is perfect. You know, it's good timing, you know, then get their information and you know, that you reach out to them and, and get them on the list or, mm-hmm. you know, that whole process. But it's, uh, it's, it, that was one thing when I first got a dog from you guys, like, mm-hmm. you know, your whole placement program was was very interesting because you know Mm -hmm. a lot of people you know they get the pick of the litter or Mm -hmm. you know hey this litter's having puppies you know we're we're buying one but you guys you know literally you have a is it a survey or what do you send out to people that are interested in in Mm -hmm. so i do a client questionnaire after they've placed their deposit gotcha and the reason being is because i actually want to talk to people over the phone I want to get to know them rather than just reading a questionnaire. Mm -hmm. Like, that's great. You can put whatever you want on there, but let's get down to the nitty gritty. Like, I'm going to understand who you are better over a phone call than I am looking at a survey. Right. That's that's right. And that's what's Mm -hmm. really cool to me is then then you guys go, okay, hey, this is the litter we're going to do. And then Mm -hmm. I think these people will be a fit for that. And Mm -hmm. like you said, somebody that may want a, a calmer dog. Mm-hmm. They're not going to get a Brock or a Clyde puppy. Right. You know, they're going to, they're going to get a strike or Bracken. Bracken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but it was really cool also at Game Fair watching all the puppies or I they're know. not so puppies anymore yeah. come in <laughs> and, um, you know, you get to see them as, as they grow and what they're yeah. doing and, and everything else. And, but I, 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 not to bring this up, but there was one, one girl that came in she had a, it was a Bud Willow puppy, yep. I believe. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, she goes, she's like, are you Brett? And I'm like, yeah. She's mm-hmm. like, oh, I so wanted a timber puppy. She, <laughs> she, she goes, you know. Didn't we all? <laughs> she's like, I, you know, I was so, so jacked up for, you know, mm-hmm. a, a timber puppy. And, you know, she's like, I'm so sorry to hear, you know, hear of, yeah. of what all happened and everything. She goes, but, you know, just hugging this puppy, just super mm-hmm. in love with it. But, you know, it was just, it was cool to me, you know. For yeah. 
just hearing that and um you know she was she was excited to have a you know, mm-hmm. get one of Timber's puppies. and Right. Well, and the whole Timber situation is actually a great example of another reason we don't do um, reservations based on sex and or based on litters because mm-hmm. that was something totally in Mother Nature's hands. That right. is something that was so uncontrollable. Like, we had no idea that was ever going to happen. Right. Right. And we yep. did what was in the best interest for Timber. Right. And it's like, you knew... I was not going to try and breed her again just to get puppies. Like, there, no way. Right. Like, that's not who I am. Yep. And um, and Timber's living a happy life. Yeah, <laughs> at home. yeah I think she's Cuddling. eating bonbons <laughs> and sleeping in my spot in bed, right? <laughs> exactly. But you know, it's just, you know, it's like as you know, the whole entire business is just run by Mother Nature for sure. And so things like that come up, and you just yeah. you can't control it. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was. Uh, it was it was yeah very unfortunate situation mm-hmm. but you know if we did the best what was for her and exactly and she's living living a happy life and we're gonna mm-hmm. have a she's ready for hunting season I hope that you know we start in September September one as well take her teal hunting and mm-hmm. probably do some dove hunting and her and Mister Deuce and we'll go we'll go from there but you excited to go to Can or Kansas I'm so excited it's my favorite hunting <laughs> is it I mean my favorite hunting that I do with Josh. Right. I love going pheasant hunting by myself. Yep. It's just, it's one of those intimate things, just you and your dog in the field. Yep. But for Josh and I to kind of kick it off like that together is going to be great. Right. Um, especially, I'm going to bring Purdy, of oh. course. You know, she's, maybe Bracken. She's awesome. I know. She's so good. <laughs> um, Brett got to work with her the other day when I was whelping. <laughs> Brett got to work with Purdy and my three new import girls, Molly, Rona, and Spay. Yes. And it was interesting. Um how they responded to Brett just because they've been through a lot the last month being yeah. imported. Yeah. Um, coming over. I think it's great when you can have three come yep. over at the same time. It's kind of like a little bond that they all get. Um, but three very different personalities. Very different personalities. Very different. Yep. Um, you know, Molly's just a little go getter, firecracker, <laughs> tiny, forty five pounds, soaking wet. Yep. Um, all she wants to do is retrieve. And then you get Spay. Spay's a little hesitant around new people. And when I say a little bit, I mean a lot. She especially like, me. Especially Brett, <laughs> for some reason. Yep. Um, but he, I get, like, even the next day, I went out there with you. Yep. And um, she just wanted to be by me. Yeah. She's she like, I know you, Mama. Wasn't so for sure. <laughs> yeah. So I had I had let her out um, and let him out in the airing yard first. And mm-hmm. she definitely was, like, just not for sure. And it took some time for me to, you know, the, the coax her. And mm-hmm. on the first day, she I got her back to my side and you know, working, but she, you know, was unsure. The second day you could see mm-hmm. that confidence had built on her mm-hmm. and it was a lot faster to, you know, get to my side and we started working her. Uh, but the third day when you were around, <laughs> I was chopped, <laughs> I was chopped liver. <laughs> I totally set you back with her. Oh my, I, I secretly loved that. You yeah. know, I love that. Oh, she was I, like, oh mom. Yeah, for sure. Oh my like, gosh. Oh, I don't know. She. She right, just all loves me. So, mm-hmm. and but. then Rona, what was Rona like with you? Did she just want your love, or Rona was very submissive? Yes, like just wanted to be right by my side. Wanted to be very pleasing mm-hmm. and worked. I mean, she was she loves to work, but mm-hmm. as soon as she comes back, she's like, you know, just super submissive. Look at mm-hmm. me, I did it. You know, let's go do it again. So, yeah, three total different personalities. Totally different. Yeah, yeah it's really interesting. You have to spend a lot of time with these. All import dogs, you have to spend a lot of time with them well, the world when they got, come over. Yeah, the world got flipped upside down. Totally. I mean, like, for the longest time, Spay, I'd be like, sit. And she would look at me like, what are you saying, lady? <laughs> like, I don't understand your you accent. Right, you didn't have the right accent. <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh, my gosh. It's so funny. Well, now we have. I get to go to Chicago because that's where they all fly into from, um, from the UK. And so now I get to go pick up two more girls. Uh-huh. So lucky that we've been able to import these females because they're it's so so rare right i mean we imported purdy um the only female in like two years so that's cool a funny story about purdy is dave <laughs> at the kennel. he's like good luck i don't know if, i don't know if she'll work for you she doesn't you know she doesn't yeah. like to work for me and mm-hmm. man it was kind of like you know kind of like the brock situation i opened mm-hmm. that door and she's like i'm here to work you know heal i didn't have to say a word to her heal add attention Mm-hmm. remarks and back and forth and she just she loved the work i loved her 
her water entry. I know. It almost looks like it hurts. Like she yeah. almost belly flops into the water. But I mean, it's athletic, but it's just how she, once she enters the water, her back feet kick out. Mm-hmm. And I didn't notice it until I took a little video and did it mm-hmm. in slow mo. I'm like, oh, well, look at this water entry. But ah, she's just a hard charger and fun to, you know, I experienced her last year because you and mm-hmm. I went out to South Dakota. Yep. And watched you guys in your element mm-hmm. um, pheasant hunting. So I got to see her work, her and Bracken, actually, yeah. were the two that went, two dogs that went with us. But yeah, just the bond between you two, mm-hmm. are just, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it really, I have never had a bond like that with a dog before. Purdy's my girl. And you really didn't even get to see her work a lot because she was 30 days into her pregnancy. Right. Yeah. So she just was by me the whole time where Bracken I actually had out working in the field. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. She did retrieve, she retrieved a couple pheasants. She did. Yeah, that really, the one with the, the really real beautiful tail. tail. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my you, gosh. Did you get that mounted? Um, The rooster itself? Yeah, uh, no, I took the tail off of it, of course. Off. Right, yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So, what's it like juggling motherhood, <laughs> puppies, mm-hmm. Josh, the... You know, it's training <laughs> from early in the morning, and now hunting season's coming. And mm-hmm. I think he listed a lot of his trips out in the beginning of this. I don't remember if it was this podcast or Retriever Robot, mm-hmm. Robot podcast, but you know, it's it, all the trips that he has planned. And mm-hmm. how how do you juggle all that? Oh my gosh! Luckily, I'm a very independent person, and so I just have to get a new routine down. When he leaves, I'm like, okay, so I have to get up extra early, let all the dogs out get all my puppy stuff done. That's before the kids wake up, mm-hmm. get them off to daycare. Like I love, I'm so thankful for it that they go to an amazing school because that helps me come back. Then I do all of my work during the day, pick them up from school and then I'm mom again. And then they go to bed and I'm, um, Riverstone breeder again. Right. You know, cause it's like, you still have to take care of the mamas, the puppies late at night, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock sometimes. Um, and luckily the kids are amazing with our dogs, you know? So it's like, well, and it's summer. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, okay, well we can be outside. Dogs can all run around. They get aired out so much attention, bring a couple of them in the house every night. Um, and then it's way harder on Josh. I tell everyone that because he's the one that's gone missing everything. Right. Um, I just get a good routine down. It takes like a good week for us to get a routine down. And then once we have it, the kids totally fall into the routine as well. They yeah. do a great job. Like, um, I never really stopped working when I had them. Like I never took a maternity <laughs> leave. <laughs> I remember coming home from the hospital after having Ava and I was like, okay, I just have to run to the puppy nursery, check on my puppies. <laughs> I could be a workaholic for sure. But, um, they go with the flow. Right. So, so well. Yep. So yeah. very fortunate in that. The support between the two of you, mm-hmm. you and Josh, just the team that you guys, I mean, mm-hmm. you're meant for each other, right? I mean, totally. anyways, but in the business aspect and then yeah. flipping from the business aspect because you work with each other mm-hmm. every single day yeah. and then obviously being married now, mm-hmm. you know, there's no really separation, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So, but the support that you give to him when, you know, when he travels and does mm-hmm. a lot of things and then obviously he's always very encouraging of you going to do yeah. your own thing, making sure that you get out and go mm-hmm. do your thing, him taking care of the kids and, you know, all the other stuff that, you know, that comes, mm-hmm. comes with that. So just the teamwork from me outside, you know, <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool yeah. to see that, see you guys, how, you know, see it all work. And well, yeah. And I just said this morning, we are we've been together for what, 15 years Yep. with dating and being married. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah, we got it down, well, kind of. That's good. You know, luckily Josh also has Dave at the kennel. Yeah. I have Abby. So we have a great support system around us. For sure. My parents are amazing when I need help. Um, but yeah, we make it work. It's one of those things that we're not going to just sit there and be like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> what do I do? You know, you just take action. Right. And that's just our personalities. Yep. Yep. Have you ever thought about, like, I know you do a little, some training, but do you ever mm-hmm. thought about like digging or you just don't have time to? So I would actually over. love move over, Josh. Okay, I would love to. <laughs> I would love to, um, but it's not my passion. Right, like that's Josh's passion more. Like I love the puppies. I love, like, um, I'm a softer person, and so the puppies just fit me so right. much more. Taking care of my mamas fit me so much more. Yep. Um, and the training, I'm one of those people that walk up and I'm not confident. 
I remember um, I had a mama. Her name was Leah, and I had bred her. And then she had her puppies, and she was going to go back home. But she also had went through training. And after having her puppies, she gravitated and listened to me a lot better than she did with Josh, just because we had been through this, you know, very extreme situation together with her having her puppies. And then, you know, like I was her world for Mm -hmm. however many weeks. Um, And so I remember we went up to the field to train, and we were going to do a video for her owner. And um, she would only listen to me, and I was supposed to send her on a blind retrieve. And I lined her up. And I sent her and she did not run where I wanted her to go. And I, you know, Josh knew I was frustrated because here I am like, I want to out show him, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, I remember he was like, let me take a video and show you what you're doing. <laughs> and it was crazy. I was not even pointing at the freaking bumper, uh, right. you know? And it's, it just goes back to, um, having that confidence and just that, um, the relationship with the dog. I also think people get nervous with Josh when, oh. Um, obviously one, now you're in front of Josh, but two, this is a bond that you're supposed to be having with your dog. I feel, I think people feel like, you know, and then they can't run their own, you know, they're not confident enough to run their own dog, for sure. which is a whole nother thing. Um, I was going to tell Josh before you left, but I'll tell you, but it's really fun to watch when people come for their first check-in to when they, um, take their dog home because even walking, up to the kennel through the office door, like each time they visit, you see a confidence in yeah. them just every time they come to visit, yeah, which is awesome. really cool to see. Yeah, that is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's uh, Josh is just just like Josh is born to train dogs. Totally, you know he he's just a natural at it. He knows how to read them. He connects with them, and it's mm-hmm. just not one dog. It's all these dogs. You know, mm-hmm. all the dogs that come through and. I've always told him, and I know I've said this on this podcast before, but, you know, that's one thing that I really respect about the guy is Mm -hmm. how he can read a dog, you know, from Mm -hmm. dog to dog to dog. He just, it's, it's talent. For sure. He's born with it. So just like you. So you were an interior designer, (laughs) right? Before the puppies. But yeah, like watching you with the puppies and the mamas, this is what you were born for. This Mm -hmm. is, this was your thing. Yeah. You know, and everybody going into college is like, oh, I'm going to go do this or I'm going to go do that. Even myself, mm-hmm. you know, went to college to be an engineer. Mm-hmm. And now look at me. I'm a content creator. You know, <laughs> yeah. so, but, you know, it was like, I I knew then, like, engineering really wasn't my passion. Mm-hmm. But in some people it is, right? But it really wasn't my passion. Mm-hmm. And it just took me 20 years to figure out that, you know, this is what I want to do. This is who mm-hmm. I am. And you were able to figure that out pretty yeah. quick and you just do an amazing job at thank you at, at taking care of them it's it's fun the fun to watch you and mm-hmm. you know fun the to, to watch the whole process i like i said i've been fortunate being here a few times when you've yeah. worked litters and you setting that alarm clock every hour or every half hour or whatever it is mm-hmm. it just that it, it takes a lot to it does you know to do that so but what do you think about uh, wrapping it up? We're almost at I think an hour we're good. and a half here. I have to go walk Lola and Benelli anyways. <laughs> They're probably like, where is she? Yeah, I should probably go up to the kennel and <laughs> maybe take some pictures <laughs> or something. <laughs> so great conversation. Yeah. Enjoyed awesome. sitting down and talking with you one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. And uh, we'll catch Josh mm-hmm. on the next podcast. Thanks, guys. See ya. Thanks for listening. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Leave us a review on iTunes and a special thank you to Yukonuba because without them, we couldn't do what we do here, bringing this information to you.